first I want to say I'm enjoying watching Esther Abraham demonstrate their stability while the boat is having quite a dance. So it's a nice metaphor to, yeah. to witness. Yeah. Um, I wanted to chew on a few things that you had said recently and also in the past. Most recently, just last session, you said Esther, jokingly, she wandered into a New Age shop and thought Ohm meant run away. She didn't think it meant run away. She just thought she should. <laughs> but she wasn't in a low vibration. It was just new and unknown to her. So, but like our friend before who was talking about it touching something, those people who were there in their higher, freer vibration, contrastingly activated within Esther beliefs and, and attitudes that evoked fear within her. But she was reaching for those in her life in some aspect? Well, she was living happily ever after on what she thought was her path. That just did not feel like her path. If she had known where she was headed, <laughs> she would have made sure she didn't get here <laughs> because of the beliefs that surrounded her. In other words, this is a perfect conversation to have on the heels of the conversation we just had, isn't it? This alternate reality that Esther is living that feels so familiar and like nothing else would possibly do was at one time a very distant stranger. When Esther first meditated and began receiving us, if we had said to her that someday you will be doing what she is now doing, she would have made certain that that did not happen from that vantage point. There's a few things that I guess are stirring in me. One yeah. of them then is you also talked about words have an energy and there's times where I feel like I talk with people and their words and their energy don't match up from my perspective it happens almost everyone Esther teases the music doesn't match the lyrics and we use the expression it's vibrationally inaccurate sometimes people use words to to compensate for how they feel and sometimes they use words to try to affect what others feel when they hear the words but it always, from a tuned in, tapped in, turned on standpoint, is inauthentic. So am I in that situation? Am I being more authentic to myself by feeling that difference in their vibration? Yes. And are they being authentic to their se themselves by using words that they hope maybe will match a vibration that they don't yet feel? Well, let's go back to what we were saying earlier. Everyone's just doing the best they can do from wherever they are. And so rather than try to sort it out in this way, instead imagine having awakened and you're in alignment and you're feeling great. And now you're having a conversation with someone and you can feel that they don't really mean what they're saying that they're not sure-footed in it, but you're having a step five moment. And so you have one intention and one intention only, and that is to inspire their connection so that their words and their music do match. And what if I don't feel like doing that? If you don't feel like doing that, then you are a perfect match to them and you belong together. <laughs> You've attracted each other from that basis of tuning rather than from this basis of tuning. And we want to hear the next question that you got, but here's something really worth thinking about. Anytime anyone comes into your experience, it's because the law of attraction has matched you up. And the law of attraction is matching you up for this variety of reasons. You might be flying high and they might be too. And that's why you matched up. You might have a strong answer to a strong question and you might be the answer and they might be the question. And that's why you matched up. You might be focused upon the opposite of what you really want And they might be focused upon the opposite of what they really want And that's why you matched up In other words, there are a lot of versions of this alternate reality, aren't there? And maybe I'm confusing some of the aspect then But I feel like I've done personal coaching and I've trained coaches And one of the things that I saw very often When someone first starts to learn about how to coach Is they want to coach everyone they meet somebody in an elevator and in those 10 seconds, they want to change their life. And as you go through it, you realize unless someone is asking a question, yeah. there's no sense in answering a question. This whole seminar has been pointed toward the answer to that. Your intention is to come into alignment 
rather than affect outcomes. And that's, I guess that's what um, I'm trying so to So many people that are coaching, in other words, just even the word coach implies, I'm going to help you change. I'm going to help you change something. We're not implying that it's a bad word, but in using the word, if you can just remember that you're coaching them into alignment, not into behavior change. To want to coach behavior change, we know this isn't your thing, but for a lot of people it is, like religions usually. To coach behavior change is to try to don the status or the place of their inner being. So I know what you want and I'm going to coach you into alignment with the thing that is right. Where coaching someone into alignment with who they really are is coaching them in to their reason for being, coaching them into the intentions that they held while they were born, coaching them in to their evolutionary experience. Ooh, what a difference that is. And yet I feel like sometimes if I get on an elevator here on the boat where there's 3,000 people or something, some people you get on and you play with immediately, you have a good time for the two or three floors you're together and off they go. And there's other people that I can feel we don't have anything to share with each other. And for me, that's discernment. That's the same skill I use for picking an apple in the supermarket. Yeah. A brown spotted apple is not an apple I'm going to choose today. If I was in a lifeboat, for 30 days and it floated by, I'd grab it and hungrily eat it down. Yeah. But so just don't be a desperate coach. <laughs> right. But that's where I'm trying to now feel the, the distinction between you saying, raise your vibration, you attract everyone and you'll play happily with everyone that plays with you. And yet I feel comfortable with where I am and how I control my vibration. And I feel like there's some people that I... They're not the apple I want to pick at that There's something moment. deeper in your question even than what you're articulating. And that is, how do you choose the people to which you want to apply your coaching skills? It's not even about coaching. I'm not really talking about that. I'm just, I use that as an analogy. It's just somebody that I want to interact with, well, talk to. We were applying the idea of coaching to the idea of communicating, uplifting. In other words, you're a born teacher. And so that's sort of always part of your vibration, even as you say the discernment that this isn't a good time is an important thing. So let's go back to what we were getting at. So as you are interacting with others, there is always a vibrational meeting and the law of attraction is underway all the time. Now it might seem like it's just a random meeting on an elevator, but it never is. There's always vibrational understanding from the broader perspective point of view. Every rendezvous has that deeper meaning. And so we liked your words. You want to be in touch with who you are so that you are discerning what to offer in any moment in time. Yes? We'll hear more of your questions because there's something here that's going to be really fun when we find it together. Yes? I think what comes up for me and my wife is then we start to question it's easy to put ourselves in the negative position if we bump into somebody who's not vibrating very high, not happy, not offering us something. Because then we start to think, so where am I at now that I brought this into my life? And I tend to want to say, maybe they needed me to be where I am. And that's why someone that I don't want to play with bumped into me. Well, that is always the attitude that we would have about every rendezvous is that first of all, nothing is ever going wrong and it is always working out for me. And since I am a teacher and it is working out for me, then it is working out for them as well. This is where learning behaviors doesn't leave you in as effective a place as being intuitive to a situation. And being intuitive to a situation is all about that practiced alignment and sort of where we started this gathering a few days ago, the personal acknowledgement of what influence I'm under. And so as more and more you acknowledge that you are under the influence of source, or at least you know the difference between when you are and you aren't, so that you're not robotically or in a methodology going through the motions of something. Instead, you allow most of your actions to be inspired actions. And then what that leads to is more of an understanding of every rendezvous. Esther had a recent experience 
of something that she knew that she had an off vibration when she moved forward. And then we're not wanting to get too involved in the details of this. So let us find a way of describing this because it was a very meaningful experience for Esther. So she knew she was off and she took action anyway because the situation was immediate and she can always take a path of least resistance. So what we're getting at, and we think it's what you're reaching for too, is if I think I'm taking the path of least resistance, and then I think I'm taking the path of least resistance, and then I think I'm taking the path of least resistance, am I on a path that's going to lead to no resistance? Contemplate that. Well, seems logical. The path of least resistance should lead to no resistance. But it also seems logical that if I've got resistance and I'm taking action from knowing I've got resistance, that shouldn't it get bigger? This is sort of where your confusion is happening, you and Esther too. Because if you don't decide that you're going to first make very sure that you're under the influence of source before you follow any impulse, then your impulses could lead you further and further from what you really want because law of attraction is going to give you what you are actively vibrating. Did we answer that in a way that you could hear it? It's deep. I did, and I yet feel like my question is going slightly different. All right, let's hear it. We have plenty of time, and you're right on something. I'll state it from my perspective, what I think is what I, Before how I Before you live. go further, we want to say to you, you are a really good coach. Before you go further, we want to say to you that your intent for uplifting is very obvious to us. Let us say to you that everybody who comes to you from their inner being's point of view wants to know what you want but they have varying degrees of resistance and that's what you and your mate are acknowledging is sometimes they come and they don't seem ready it's like their inner being dragged them to you and they're not ready to hear what you have to say and i don't say it because i sense and we sense all the better that they aren't really ready all the better so what is the obvious thing to do under those conditions? If their inner being dragged them to you and they're not ready to hear what you have to say, what's your purpose for being there? To thrive in their face. <laughs> okay. To be joyful in front of them, to be tuned in, tapped in, turned on, to be high on life, to be exhilarated to be alive. Not to ask them to do anything. You just demonstrate your own alignment. That's why their inner being brought them to you. Now let's take this a little further. So that means there are vibrational attributes of a problem that somehow match up the vibrational attributes of the solution because it's the same stick, yes? The fact that you're on the same stick, you're thriving and they're not, you're prosperous and they're not, whatever, you're healthy and they're not, doesn't matter. It's the same stick. And so the law of attraction brings you together because there is a vibrational sameness on that stick. The question is, which end of the stick is going to dominate? And everything that we've been talking about in these days that we've been together is you being able to maintain your end of the stick while you're viewing their problem. And that's what the difference between a step one moment and a step five moment is, is that when you're tuned to it really often and there they are, you're together because you've got the same stick going on and you know something that they want to know or even vice versa. But your intention has been for a while, you got out there ahead of it even before you met them to be in vibrational alignment with who you really are. And so there they are and they're not ready for your words, but maybe they are. There might be some inspiration that flows from you and it might just be the playfulness that you have with each other or your zest for life. And that's usually what'll happen. There might be one exploratory statement or one insight and if it's met with resistance or confusion, okay, it's not worth pursuing yeah. at that point. Yeah. Okay, I think I feel good with that. Just the word pursuing is worth considering because you live in an attraction-based universe. And in an attraction-based universe, you need never pursue anything. Just establish a vibration that is steady and what matches it will come to you.